tick along and wait for the delay to catch up to me. So I'm sitting here at 15 seconds. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And usually we gotta wait till 30 seconds. So let's see if they throw an ad in front of me like they usually do. I don't know. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, I'm here. Come on, YouTube. Today. Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, there we go. What do you know? Now we got a 45 second delay and a Claritin commercial tonight. Oh, and now I get Cinemax or whatever it is. Great. Throw two commercials at me. Hang on. Still waiting for it to clear so I can see it here. Tick tock. Come on. There we go. All right. What do you know? I can see me. Okay. And I see Florida Mama Bear, David, Bucky Dude. Now it's going too fast. Handyman Prepper, Susan Musser. As it slows down, I catch a name here or there. All right. Josh and Palmer. Good. You guys can see me. Happy Saturday night, guys. Okay. So hopefully everybody had a good start to their weekend. It was a gorgeous day here. It got up in the mid 70s. So I was out planning my beats today. I'm a little behind from being sick. Mrs. P is finally getting over it. So I was sick last week and she's had it all this week. So it's kind of slowed things down around the house here, but uh, got to get that done. Tomorrow's, or well, actually Monday's the 1st of April. So I got to get my tomatoes started. Yeah, the one downside for me being sick is I killed most of my pepper plants, so I've got to do it all over again because I wasn't going anywhere near the garage when I was sick, and so they basically dried up. So I've got to restart all those again. Fortunately, it's early enough in the season that I can do it. It'll delay my harvest a couple of weeks, but so be it. But yeah, that was about it. Uh, just kind of going along, checking out fruit trees, and my apples have finally started to bud. They're usually the last ones. I mean, the peach trees already had flowers. The cherry, the plum, those have already flowered. The apples are just starting to bud. My muscadines, my grapes have not started budding yet. The blueberries are budding. My strawberries are looking incredible. Uh, got my onions in yesterday, two days ago, so that's all in. And put the broccoli in tomorrow. And like I said, restart tomatoes and or restart peppers and start my tomatoes. That's about it. Potatoes for me are a couple of weeks away. Corn is a few weeks away. So yeah, it's that time. And as we move on along, I saw something before we started. Somebody had asked a question in there about uh, their cabbage flowering. And I will tell you what that is. That is the plant being stressed. Just give you this one real quick. Usually when you see something like that, it's root bound, meaning that it's already filled up its cell or filled up the cup. Remember a plant, its whole mission is to reproduce. And so when the plant is getting stressed and says, I can't grow anymore, it's trying to reproduce. So chances are that you're root bound and those plants need to be put in bigger pots. That would be what it is before they go in the ground. So just give, give you guys as an idea. But yes, yeah, so that is the excitement around here. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot going on, me getting over the flu or whatever the hell it was. And Mrs. P kind of getting, eh, she's hit the crest. So she's starting to come down, but, uh, yeah, it's been a quiet week around here, so that was it. It's fun. Sometimes you guys notice probably this week some shorter videos, you know, because that was all the energy I had to get those up. You know, it wasn't quite going in as, as in-depth as far as usually I like to, but uh, I'm pretty much back to normal now. I'd say I'm probably 95%. I'm still a little low on the energy side, but that's coming back. So, all right, uh, I know why nearly 3,000 of you are here. Well, say 2,000 of you are here because you like to hang out, 
the other thousand are going, ah, okay, tonight's a drawing. So, <clears throat> all right, so let's get into this drawing here real quick. If you guys remember what we were talking about, it is the Anchor Solar Generator. This thing is awesome, I will tell you this, guys. Like I said in the video, if this would have been available two years ago, this would have been the way I'd, I'd have gone. Uh, because it's greater expandability than what I have, but not overkill, and it's less expensive than uh, most anything else on the market. Well, anything else on the market for what it is, a single unit that will give you 240 volt. So <clears throat> whoever wins this one tonight, you are getting one hell of a prize, and anybody that's looking for a large generator to power a lot of stuff, this is definitely the way to go so all right so we're going to get into what to do here and i'm going to remind everybody how this all works <clears throat> we will go into the random comment picker here in a couple of minutes okay we will draw a name okay the in order to be a valid entry it the person must mention the state in which they live in lower 48 and must mention their favorite soft drink okay I will be a little lenient on this one. You know, if somebody puts Coke or Pepsi, if they, somebody puts cola, that's fine. Even if somebody puts iced tea in there, I'll go with that one, okay? You know, I don't necessarily need it to be brand name, but it something's got to be in there, okay? And it can't be, I don't drink soft drinks, that doesn't fly, okay? You got to put something in there. It's like I said last week about picking a basketball team. I don't care if you don't watch, go find one. Okay, put a name in there. I do that for the simple reason it keeps the trolls out. Uh, so that works there. Now, once we draw the name, it's a valid entry. That person will have three minutes to mention in the chat room that they are here. Doesn't have to be anything long, just I'm here. Okay, that's fine. And that way we know there. It's a must be present to win. I will tell everybody, don't bail. I know a lot of people like to watch on their phone, you know, or laptop or whatever. Well, the drawings are going on so they can type in, I'm here, and then they go to their TV. Wait until we've got confirmation that the winner's here because we have it happen quite a bit where somebody isn't here and we have to draw a second name and you don't want to be scrambling going, oh my God, I got to get back in my computer. And then you miss it. Okay, so just saying. Now, I'm going to say the two things that I always say. When I say and when the mods post, do not make any more comments. We're serious, okay? There's 3,000 of you guys in here. There's one of me looking for that name. And you guys know how fast, even on slow mode, that the chat goes by. The reason I do it is so I don't miss somebody. I'm dead serious when I say if you if you post something there and you're not the winner afterwards, the moderators will put you in a seven-day timeout. That means no chatting in the live streams. That means no comments under the videos. Okay. I'm serious. Doing it. Please show a little respect for me and the mods when we're trying to find who the winner is. Okay. Uh, so at, on that note, I guess, I swear there's something I'm forgetting, but let's get into it. And here we will find who is going home with a 7,200 watts worth of power tonight. All right, so let's flip this over here. And here we go. All right, so random comment picker there in the center is the link to yesterday's video. We will go to fetch. We do not include replies, like I said, primary comment only. We do not allow duplicates, so everybody gets one entry. That is it. And let's see how many names we have. And it should be over 3,000, I would bet. Guys, you don't need to make comments in here about your city and what your soft drink is because you had to enter on yesterday's video. Entering here doesn't do you any good. Uh, so. And what do we have? We There's the 3,000 mark. Do, 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 do. 3,382 entries. Okay. 
at this point, no more comments. And as soon as I see it come up from the mods, once you guys see it from the mods, don't comment. There you go. Jacob said it. Stop chat now. That's it. Do, do not comment. Bass Ackwards, Modimer said it. All right, guys. Robert said it. Anybody that chats after Robert's comment there, seven days in jail. So there we go. All right. You guys are all there. Okay. And by Tony DG, you're out. By Crazy Farm, you're gone. Uh, by Jenny Hattrick, F U two, you're gone permanently. Uh, the Jerry Hattrick guys, you can ban that person permanently from the channel. Uh, their history. So that's not a seven day. You, you pull something like that. That's a, you're gone for good. I have no patience for that. Okay. All right. So let us find ourselves a winner. Team Stokes. Hey, from South Carolina, Pepsi Zero. Black Label is the best. Thank you so much to you and Elliot. That is a valid entry. So let's get this over here. Team Stokes, if I can get to the right screen. Team Stokes, you have until 9.13 to announce your presence in here. And thank you, Robert, for tossing that guy out. Uh, looking for Team Stokes. Uh, Team Stokes, I'm going to give you till 914 because it just ticked to 911. All right, looking for Team Stokes. Now, remember, the reason I do the three minute thing here, guys, is because you. You can only post something every 90 seconds. So if Team Stokes posted something right before we did the drawing, they're waiting for their timeout to expire so they can post. But come 914, if Team Stokes is not replied, we will draw another name. And I've said many times, it always kills me. You know somebody's going, oh, crap, I forgot about this. And they, they watch it in the morning and go, I just lost over nearly $5,000 prize. That sucks. <laughs> uh, still waiting. So Team Stokes, we will wait again. I mean, even if they're saying he's gone, who knows, maybe they got kicked off the internet or their mother-in-law is watching and says, get on, your name was called and they're scrambling. So we will wait. Team Stokes, we are still waiting. And guys, again, same thing. Do not comment unless you are Team Stokes, okay? So, because if Team Stokes isn't here, you don't have a chance to win in the next one or anything else I do for the next seven days. So, waiting, waiting, waiting. Team Stokes. And I'm losing my optimism quickly here. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You can always tell it's usually quick. Somebody's either tap, tap, tap within a few seconds after we call their name or we wait till the end, but we will wait. And we are in the last minute here, Team Stokes. Maybe you went to get another Pepsi Zero. I don't know. Well, we're probably down in the final 30 seconds here, but I'm watching the clock. And as soon as we get to 914, that's it. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, as the clock is ticking, we're probably in the final few seconds here. Team Stokes, are you here? Eh. All right, so we are drawing another name. And we will flip this back over so you guys can see it again. And we will close out of that. And we will try a new name. And this time it will be Reloader7035. I'm in Illinois. On special occasions, I enjoy an A&W root beer. And thank you, Mr. P and Elliot, for what you do for this community. Okay, Denise, goodbye for seven days. Okay. 
Reloader7035, you have until 917 to announce your presence. Get to the bottom there so I can see where everything is. Reloader, I am here. Okay, so we just see Reloader, so I want to check and make sure. And I got to get this stupid icon stuff passing me. There we go. Maybe go to channel. And I will show you this. Flip this over. Okay. Reloader is, in fact, Reloader 7035. So that is a valid entry. And that is the right person. So we do have a winner. All right. Congratulations, Reloader. You are the proud new owner of a Anchor Solix generator. What I will need you to do is email me this evening or in the morning, not a big deal, uh, your name, your physical mailing address, and your phone number. And I will get those over to Elliot for Monday morning. And they usually get everything out around Wednesday. So figure maybe by next weekend or a week from Monday or Tuesday, you will have a new generator in your house. So congratulations. All right. So let me get me set back up here and we will get into regularly scheduled programming. All right, so we'll get into Q&A here. As per normal, guys, if you have questions for me, please put it in all caps, just like every other YouTube channel. Makes it easier for me to find the questions directed to me. If you want to have conversations amongst yourselves in the chat room, which I wholeheartedly support, please keep those in lowercase uh, letters, whatever it would be. That way, you guys can converse between yourselves. Maybe somebody has an answer to a question that I don't get to or I don't know. I don't know everything, guys. Uh, you know, unlike some YouTubers who think they do. Uh, yeah, use the community to your benefit. If you have a question, hopefully somebody else can give you an answer if I can't. The only requirement that I do have, like we just found out from our gentleman that decided F you was an appropriate response. You want to be rude. You want to be obnoxious. You want to be an asshole. You get to go bye bye. Okay. I have no patience for that whatsoever. I don't care. People could say, oh, you're censoring me. Yeah, my channel, my rules, the end. Okay. If you want to be rude, leave now. Otherwise, we'll do it for you. Okay. And it happens a few times a week in the comments. I just toss them. Okay. Understand, I don't care. <laughs> You know, you, you hear all these people go, oh, my God, you're going to piss off your subscribers. Those aren't the subscribers I want. Okay, I want people who are part of a community who want to uh, share their knowledge, learn things, et cetera, et cetera. The assholes in the world, I don't deal with them in a real life. I certainly am not going to deal with them on YouTube. So there's my response. I ain't taking shit. The end. All right, so let's get into Q&A, and I will get up here. There's a whole bunch of congratulations, so we'll get into the questions. Uh, Southern Magnolia, how do I start an asparagus bed? Okay, uh, now it depends on what you're doing. Asparagus is a perennial, okay, just so you guys know. So it's plant it once, harvest it for 30 years. Now, I started my asparagus four years ago, I think it was, and I started by seed, okay? Last year, the third year, I had enough asparagus to get us each about a meal. This year, I'll get a little bit more. Now, if you're, if you're planting asparagus from seed, it's going to take a while. What you can buy are what is known as asparagus crowns, okay? And what it looks like is an octopus or something like that. You know, it's got a whole bunch of tentacles, the roots. If you're going to plant that, okay, if you're going to plant by seed, then it's just like anything else. You start it in a little seed plug. When it grows a little bit, you go out and plant it. Keep it going, keep it going. And three years, four years later, you're going to be harvesting from it, okay? It'll come up every year. Mine's already coming up. I've picked a few asparagus spears this year. Nothing much I'm trying to get them up. Got to be careful with them, though. They do grow quick and you know, you want to get them when they're maybe about a foot long. You let them get too long and they'll, I mean, they'll grow to three, four feet high. No big deal. But it's like chewing on a stick at that point. Okay? They get very woody. If you get the asparagus crowns, the octopus looking thing, what you want to do 
is dig a trench where you're going to put all your asparagus plants. And then in the middle, you're going to put a small little hill. Okay. So your hole will look, you know, here's your ground level. It'll go down, come up and go back up. So it looks like a W in there. And you want to spread those tentacles over the top of the hill. And then you want to backfill everything with dirt. It's not hard to grow. Asparagus growing from seed can be a little difficult. Uh, but if you're not comfortable with trying to do asparagus from seed, go buy yourself some asparagus crowns. But the big key to it is, well, it's a perennial. Don't expect to be eating off of it for a few years, okay? Because you've got to get that whole huge root structure going. And I mean, asparagus can get, plants can get very big. You can literally have an asparagus edge, okay? Because the the fronds that it'll throw up that are very pretty over the summer, at the end of the year, you got to cut all those down to you know, about three inches off the ground. Uh, D. Van Eyck, what is my take on Rainbow Day tomorrow instead of Easter? That is going to be the topic of tomorrow morning's video. Uh, there's a whole lot of crazy crap that is going on with this most incompetent president ever. Uh, but I'm going to talk about some other details that maybe you don't know about tomorrow morning. Uh, Dave the Kid, Pinball, does Mrs. P give those fancy painted eggs for Easter? You need the Fabergé eggs? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry, those aren't in the budget. Uh, actually, without kids around the house or grandkids or anything like that, we don't even dye Easter eggs or anything like that. I'm going to make a ham for dinner tomorrow, and that'll be it. But, it's you know, again, it's just the two of us. So, But we'll have a ham for dinner. Not a whole lot else we can have on the diet. Uh, so I'll figure out maybe... Maybe we'll cheat a little bit and have a little bit of broccoli with it or something, you know, something that's well, maybe maybe a salad. I don't know. But not a whole lot we can eat other than the meat. But no, no, no Fabergé eggs. Uh, Michelle M., have I ever tried building a smaller scale windmill? No, I have not. Uh, I mean, I can't think, honestly, it would be that difficult, especially can, what I'm assuming you're talking about trying to do is uh, to generate electricity. Uh, I mean, honestly, the easiest way I would think to do it somehow is have like a car alternator and the windmill fan, put a belt on it, tie it together, have the alternator connected to a car battery and charge it that way. Uh, that would probably be the easiest. No, I've never tried to build one. Uh, but honestly, I think with somebody with average DIY skills could probably put something together pretty easy. Uh, Off-grid living. Barge hit a bridge in Oklahoma. Oh, my God. And the illegals headed to Tennessee next. Yeah, that story on illegals heading to Tennessee, I know a few of you guys sent me the email. I think it was redacted or whatever posted. That story is like three weeks old already. Uh, it keeps getting recycled or whatever. I mean, it started coming out of San Diego uh, almost a month ago where in California they were starting to bus illegals from San Diego to Tennessee. Uh, there's a lot of them going to Nashville. There, there's, trust me, they're out by me too. Okay, uh, somebody was telling me what earlier this week, I think it was, uh, the Walmart that's up here in Taswell, which is the nearest town to me. Uh, there was a line of illegals standing there waiting to Western Union money to back home to you know the family, you know, because guys, they're not here for jobs. That's not why they're coming. They're coming up here because they were told, hey, there's a whole bunch of free money that you can get. So they're going to come up here, get all the free money they can, send it all back to Mexico, and then a lot of them are just going to go back and go, hey, cool. You know, we took $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 from Uncle Sam, and we're back home now. Okay. It, all this BS that they're here to work is BS. 
Uh, rising faith, what's the trick to growing beets? I'm going to try one more time. Uh, if, if you're having trouble growing beets, I'd say direct seed it, okay? Uh, I do mine in seed plugs, but I've been doing it long enough. There's there's not a real trick. The, the deal with beets is you've got to keep them moist, but not wet, and don't let them dry out uh, while they're growing. If you do start it in seed plugs, I was talking about this last week, once you get your first set of true leaves, okay, that's when it's time to transplant them. And at this time of year, this is the time to do it. Granted, if there's still snow in the ground, you're not doing it. But I mean, you know, the, the cooler evenings, the cooler nights, beets can handle temperatures down to about 26. So you don't worry about something like that. Uh, but the, the biggest key is you can't let them dry out, but you don't want to drown them either. Because they don't have long, very long roots. Remember, you're growing, you're trying to grow that that root ball, if you will. Uh, so the wiry roots, use that term, uh, are not extremely long. Jerry Spinoza, have I ever heard of Masad Ayub? Yes, I have. He does a whole lot of good videos on YouTube about guns, you know, how to handle you know, somebody coming to your door, uh, you know, the FBI showing up and saying, hi, we're here because of your Facebook posts. Or if you're pulled over by a cop and, you know, you've got a gun in your in your car legally, you know, how do you deal with the cop? You know, yeah, he's he puts out some exceptional videos on gun laws. Uh, if you're not, I mean, you should know in your state, you know, a simple question here. If you're driving along and a cop pulls you over for speeding or whatever, okay, and you have a concealed carry permit and you have a gun on you, do you know in your state if you are required to uh, let the cop know? Because the laws are different in states. Some you are required to let them know. Some are some you are only supposed to tell the cop if asked, okay. If you're a passenger in a car, do you have to let the cop know, you know? These are things he covers. Those are laws that you should know because you can get yourself in a world of trouble if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Uh, D. Gallagher, can I plant strawberries in a shadier area? Uh, they need at least part sun. You're not gonna you're not gonna grow them in shade. Uh, I mean, most of my yard is part sun because I got. 90 some odd trees in my yard even after cutting down 60 of them okay uh you know i don't have it i don't live on a, in a cemetery or something like that where it's just direct sun all day long i mean i may get some areas of my gardens may get morning sun some areas may get afternoon sun and you need to pl plant you know there's there's a lot of way you can't just put a plant in the ground and go okay this is where it goes does the plant like full sun? Does the plant like part sun? I mean, let's say it's a hosta. Does the plant like shade? Uh, you know, you need to know those things. Uh, how much sun? You know, does the plant require four to six hours? Does the plant require six to eight hours? You know, uh, what are the heights of my plants? You know, you don't want to plant a uh something that requires that, you know, a small plant, let's say bush beans. Uh, well, no, bush beans is a bad example. Uh, try to think of something. You know, let, let's give you this. You don't want to plant your green peppers, which need a lot of sun, right next to your corn stalks, all right? Because the corn stalks are going to shade out the peppers. And so until you get you know, if you get your corn stalks here, your green peppers will look like this because all the ones that are close are getting shaded out. They're not getting enough sun. They won't grow. Uh, so, you know, you need to plan things like that. Uh, Saffron Bay, how is the weight loss going? My face looks slimmer. Uh, we weighed in this morning. I came in at 290. So 
actually I gained a pound or so since Wednesday. So I'm at 19, I'm down 19 pounds, which, uh, what Wednesday will mark two months into the diet. So I'm still going to look at this. If I'm averaging 10 pounds a month, I'm good with that. Okay. If I lost 20 pounds in two months. I'm good with that. Hedge 774, you helped me start keto. I've lost 30 pounds in six weeks. Thank you. Uh, you're doing better than I am. <laughs> you know, then again, I don't know how much weight you had to lose. Uh, you know, I've still got another 60 pounds to go. Uh, I'm not expecting it to be fast. Uh, you know, it's not a crash diet. It gets a little tiresome. I, I won't say, you know, because we're doing carnivore around here, but not like we're cheating, but I can't eat beef every day. You know, it's like tonight for dinner, we had chicken legs and chicken thighs for dinner. Uh, sure, it's still meat. I'm eating it with butter. Uh, but okay, did we have pork this week? Yes. Did we have fish this week? Yes. As long as I'm seeing progress, I'm okay. I'm not worried about the speed. I'm not going, oh my God, I've got to lose. 50 pounds in two months, you know, otherwise I'm a failure. No, I'm just steadily going. So, William Tate, one one more week to the solar crazies. Unfortunately, I read that before the whole page shot to the bottom. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you this. You, you guys have all seen the stories by now. It's, we're calling out the National Guard. Don't leave your house buy food, make sure your cars are all tanked up and gas, everything. It's like, no, okay? This is an event that's going to last, what, five minutes? You know, sure, you're going to have a whole lot of people that, oh, i got to travel a thousand miles to go see it. Okay, yippee. Don't, you know, and then you, you get all the people, too, that are saying, you know, oh, this is the end of days and, you know, this, the world's going to end, you know, God's had it with us. The way I look at it this way, if April 8th is the end of days, God doesn't really care if you've got food stored. God doesn't care if you got a full tank of gas. If that's the end of earth, we're done. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be man-made. I think they are way overblowing this. I mean, like, to the nth degree overblown. It's like, yeah, okay, big deal. The moon's going to pass in front of the sun. You'll see it for three or four minutes and life will go on. But all this stuff about schools closing and businesses shutting down and, you know, oh my God, you need to be out of the front porch, you know, protecting your house from looters. What? You know, just stupidity. Uh, Laura Selzer, do I recommend testing my soil? Yes, I tell you guys that every year. Uh, test your soil pH, test your soil for its nutrients. You don't have to go so crazy to start figuring out what your magnesium content is. But if, if you at least test your soil for your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium, that's going to tell you, and your pH, that's going to tell you 99.9% .9 of everything you need to have a successful garden. You know, if there's not enough, enough nitrogen in your garden, fine, add blood meal. Or, you know, if you're missing potassium or you're missing phosphorus, you know, whether it's bone meal or whether you need to add lime or whatever it is, you know, just get it in there and go. But you've got to know what crop you're going to plant too, okay? You can't plant your corn right next to your blueberries, for example, okay? Blueberries need a very acidic soil. Corn needs a, new, uh, a, a neutral soil. Corn needs a ton of nitrogen. Blueberries don't, you know? So yeah, you need to test your soil, but not only for testing your soil, there's not a one size fits all. Everything in your garden doesn't need the same soil. For your vegetables, for the most part, you are pretty safe sticking around six and a half to seven pH, but you need to make sure you've got enough of the nutrients, the, uh, the uh, nitrogen, phosphor phosphorus, and potassium. 10, 10, 10, okay? That's what the NPK is. So 
yeah, definitely test your soil each year. You can, you can do it through your local co-op or whatever, your local, ex, local extension office. You can go to Walmart and buy a little soil testing kit. I've showed you how to do that before. You know, you don't need to spend hundreds of bucks on it. You know, if you've got, if you've got the basics, you know, gee, my nitrogen's low. Good. Go put out some grass fertilizer out there and you got your nitrogen covered or diluted urine or blood meal or whatever and add, add nitrogen to it, whatever you need to be. Just go from there. Kay Webbles, pinball, what's my favorite thing to eat? Uh, my favorite food. You know what, I can't even eat. I'd say probably my favorite food is chili, and I can't even have it now because of all the beans. But uh, yeah. Tom Borbo, did I get some sun today? Yeah, like I said, I was out planting my beets. I was out in the garden. It was a beautiful sunny day here, so I was out there for a couple hours. I would do it. CC369, what is my favorite soda? I don't... I rarely drink soda anymore. I mean, to the point where maybe one a month. Uh, and usually it's a Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke. I really don't care which one it is. Uh, when I did drink soda, which is going to go back 20 some odd years, uh, I my favorite was always a Mountain Dew or Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, Sandy, I was wondering if I had any withdrawal symptoms from my diet. No, I never, I never got the keto flu or anything like that. Any of the problems, but again, everybody's going to be different. Okay. I didn't eat, I, I've never been a big sweets person. Okay. I mean, I'm not pies and cakes and cookies. That's not who I am. The only withdrawal I could feasibly had was from carbs and that's not really something that you're going to have a withdrawal symptom from. You know, okay, do I miss pasta? Mentally, yeah. Does my body look for it? No, you know, nothing like that. So I'd say, no, I didn't. I mean, it was just a change in diet, and that was that. Uh, Judy Lehman, any suggestions on protecting our gardens from the locust inf infestation coming? If you are projected to get a locust infestation, get yourself some of that uh, white uh, garden cloth, if you will, and just take some sticks or something and put them on the, you know, depending on the size of your garden. Okay. But let's say it's a four by four garden, you know, put them in each corner, put one in the center, drape this stuff over it, and the locusts can't get in. You know, it still lets sun in, still lets water in, but the bugs can't get in. So, you know, any sort of bug netting is going to work well. Uh, NT, do I have an update on the school that PBJ is choosing? Yes, I think I told you guys a week or two ago, she got accepted to Butler. Uh, so she is moving down to Indianapolis and she will be going to school in Butler. Uh, I believe that starts May 13th, so she's got six weeks to get ready. It was kind of a no-brainer. I mean, Butler for the PA program was the 24th ranked school in the country. She was also accepted to St. Francis, which was the 199th ranked school, okay? So significantly higher ranking, you know, however they do it. The other big difference is Butler's $37,000 cheaper than St. Francis. St. Francis is a private school. So better ranked school, cheaper. Not a hard decision to make, you know. And as she said, she goes, yeah, but dad, she goes, you know, rent and everything like that is going to cost me more than in Indy than it is in Fort Wayne. I'm like, it ain't going to cost you that much more. I mean, you're talking a two-year program and thirty-six, thirty-seven thousand dollars. $37,000, okay? That's $18,000 a year. That's an extra $1,500 a month, you know? 
I told her, I said, you know, for what you're paying for rent now, you could go to, to break even, you know, you could go have a $2,200 a month rent and be break even if you went down to Indy. She's like, that'd be ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. You know, so she's looked at some apartments and she's finding uh, ones that are close to school that are like 12 or 1400 bucks. And she's panicking about that because that's crazy expensive. And it's, I don't think I ever paid $1,400 a month ever for rent. Uh, but Mrs. P and I were looking at it, you know, because before we bought our house in Vegas, we did rent in Salt Lake City. And so I had figured out what our rent was on my income. And it was about 15%. And I'm looking at for PBJ and going, what she's looking at apartments for her projected income, once she grads, graduates, would still be at 17%. So yeah, I mean, you know, everybody talking about how crazy rent is, rent's crazy, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think, I think my highest mortgage ever was $1,400. And that was my house in Fort Wayne. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's insane what what rent is anymore. And I feel for people that are stuck in the, you know, entire generations of people going, we're never going to buy a house. I mean, looking around here, I mean, I pay attention to real estate market here, especially since all my property or my homeowner's insurance just went up. 16%. Uh, but we were, Mrs. P and I were looking at Realtor or Zillow or something the other day. And they're getting a quarter of a million dollars here for 1,200 square foot manufactured homes on a third of an acre. I'm like, are you high? <laughs> you know, it's like, no. But that's what they're selling for. Uh Delta Prepper, what would I consider a safe difference, safe distance from a major metropolitan area of Memphis to be? Memphis, uh, let's see, safe distance from Memphis, two to three hours. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near Memphis. Uh, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Memphis was the murder capital of the United States for 2023. Uh, so, yeah, no, I... You know, the further away from Memphis I can get, the better. Uh, but I, for basically any city, I want to be at least an hour drive time away, uh, because if everything goes crazy, yeah, sure, you can have some people drive, but how long is it going to take them to walk for the masses to walk? And at least that way, you've got a little bit of heads up to get yourself ready. It's like, oh crap, the world just went to shit. What do we do? You know, and this gives you time to scramble, but get people home, whatever needs to be, get people armed, get people positioned. Okay. Have your duty rosters, you know, that you probably already got relatively set up. You just got to fill the names into it and go, okay, this person, this person, this person, this person has this time, this time, this time, this time, guard duty, here's your perimeter that you walk, you pay attention. These are the sleep schedules. You've got, to, you've got some time to do that. Uh, I want to be at least an hour outside of the city. Uh, Charlie Knoll, how's the pond doing? It's still doing its thing. Uh, Mrs. P was out feeding the fish, so the fish are still happy, so uh, that's that silver gram asking about the diet. We talked about that. Uh, Gina HT seven B here. Can I put peppers and tomatoes in the ground now? No, you are way too early. Peppers, peppers don't need to. I'm six B seven A and my, my tomatoes and peppers won't go in until sometime in June. Uh, so you are still two months ahead of time before you're putting peppers and tomatoes in the ground. Uh, simpler times homestead. What can I do to stop peach tree leaves from turning yellow and falling off? Uh, you've got a soil issue. You've got, you've got fertilizer problems. The first thing that you're going to need to do, and I've mentioned these before, go get yourself some Job's 
fruit tree plant spikes and put those around the drip line of the tree. You've, you've got problems with there, there's no nutrients going down to your the roots of your tree. Uh, Barbara Benoit, just wondering, do I make my own vape oil? Oh yeah, <laughs> trust me. Uh, you know, I mean, get a four ounce bottle of juice. It'll cost you 20 bucks at a store. I can make it for about a dollar. Uh, the downside is, and I mean, I knew this a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, the good old Biden administration, uh, prohibited the sale of nicotine through the mail, post office, FedEx, UPS, whatever it would be. So it gets very difficult to get, and they try to keep it out of the hands of kids. So I went and got myself a couple of gallons of nicotine. So I've got nicotine to last me for the rest of my life. It stays in the freezer. It's fine. Uh, I mean, I use maybe a pint. Yeah, I'd say a pint of nicotine between me and Mrs. P a year. Uh, so yeah, we're in good shape for 20 years worth of nicotine. Uh, and then even buying the flavorings and the vegetable glycerin and stuff like that. By the time I break it down, it cost me about a buck. I mean, that tells you what the markup is when you go into this. What cost me a dollar to make, they're selling for 20. Okay. You wonder why there's vapes, vape shops all over the place. It's a freaking cash cow. Uh, Terry Hardaway, first food production fires, now bridges, coincidences. Well, let's not forget trains and airplanes and everything. I mean, this pick something, you know, if, if the Biden administration touches it, guaranteed it turns to shit, you know, Pete Buttigieg, hey, you're doing a great job. Planes are falling apart, trains are derailing, and ships can't figure out their way under a bridge. And you wonder why they called you Pothole Pete. You couldn't fix potholes, but hey, let's put you in charge of the entire country's infrastructure and transportation. You know, another one of Joe's great ideas. Uh, Heather Bray, can you do asparagus in a pot? I would not, absolutely not suggest it, uh, just because, like I said, it's a perennial and it needs, those roots really need to spread. Uh, asparagus is something that needs to go in the ground. Uh, Carl Lynn, does Mrs. P plant for pollinators? What's best for you? Oh my God. Uh, I mean, we've probably got 50, 60 different kinds of flowers out in the yard. I mean, sure, we got our roses and her peonies and lilies and there's marigolds and God, I can't th think of that. We've got so many different kinds of flowers, butterfly bushes to bring in pollinators into the yard. Yes, absolutely. I mean, planting them for aesthetics, but also when we're picking them, we're looking for ones that are going to attract butterflies and bees. Uh, talked about April 8th. Jeff, Joe Stant, have I planted Jerusalem artichokes? No, I've never planted them in my life. I And I know plenty of people talk about them. I mean, that you know, you can eat them like potatoes and stuff like that. I plant potatoes, okay. Uh, nothing wrong with Jerusalem artichokes. I've never eaten them. Uh, I don't have them. So I don't know if I'd like them. If I don't, it's, I plant what I eat. And, you know, I'm not interested in, in experimenting. <clears throat> I don't like eggplant. I don't like okra. Guess what? I don't plant eggplant. I don't plant okra. So I don't know about Jerusalem artichokes, but there's probably thousands of different vegetables out there. I don't know if I've never eaten. So I plant the ones that I like to eat. Uh, RLRL, I predict that the pond will soon have turtles from the lake. Uh, well, that's a possibility. God knows the frogs know where we are. I mean, it's it sounds like the bayou here at night in the springtime with the frog, the bullfrogs chirping. So... Uh, 
farm ranch, I'll agree. They made Rainbow Day one day too early. They should be considered an April Fool's joke. I'll agree with you 100% of the way there. Uh, Country Humans Network. I have a problem with school district talking LGBTQ stuff in high school. What, what, what do I think about the issue? It shouldn't be brought up in school at all. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's a social issue. You send your kids to, st to school to get educated, not indoctrinated. And, you know, the kids, why is it that we don't teach the kids anything about personal money management, but they can spend years sitting here learning about some guy or some girl who can't figure out which bathroom to use? I mean, and you wonder why we've got a generation of idiots because, you know, I mean, go watch all these man on the street videos. I mean, I've, I've said this before, you know, where's Washington, D.C.? In Washington. No, it's not. It's on the other side of the country. Where's the United States on a map? I don't know. You know, what's the capital of the United States? Seattle. You know, I, I mean, these these kids know nothing. They can, they can scream, go watch any of Charlie Kirk's stuff, okay? And the stupidity coming out of these college students that, I mean, it is, I mean, they're not even grounded in reality, you know, and somehow they're in college, you know, you know I'm like, you have no clue, you know, oh, I'm smart, I'm, t I'm, I'm studying in this. Really, then why don't you know stuff that was taught to the rest of us in sixth grade? Uh, <laughs> Celine 77 star 99, cheating with broccoli. No, cheat with chocolate bunny. <laughs> no, <laughs> broccoli's bad enough. We got a few carbs on it. I'm not going to sugar load. Uh, Deborah Jones, deviled eggs with ham is good. Yeah, I mean, God knows I eat enough eggs. You know, we probably go through at least two dozen eggs a week right now. I, it's just, I mean, and I mean, I'm going through two pounds of butter a week. Uh, it's just, it's crazy what you look at this and you go, I mean, what I'm eating is everything we were told that was wrong to eat for my entire life. I'm going, funny how everybody got fat on the USDA recommended diet. And I'm losing weight on what you told me not to eat. Hmm. Could there possibly be any ulterior motive there? Oh, I don't know. You know, why is it that everything's got to have sugar in it? And that's on the USDA type. Oh, but if you eat a little bit of vegetables, you'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. Kickbacks. Uh, Gina, we talked about potatoes and peppers. Uh... Seven customs. Have I started any workout regimen to help lose more weight? <sighs> okay, this is what the, I'm going to give you this 95% of weight loss is on food intake and 5% is on exercise. Just give you that right for the first. So you can exercise till your heart's content, but if you're eating too much food, you're not going to lose weight. Right? There's the first part, or eating the wrong foods too. The exercise is more to build up your cardio, to build muscle, that sort of stuff. Uh, yes, we do walk. Uh, that's about as far as I am right now. I mean, my ultimate goal eventually is to be able to pass an Army PT test again, uh, because there ain't no freaking way in the world I'm running two miles in 16 minutes right now. I will tell you that that ain't even coming close. Uh, if I can get back there, then I'll consider myself a success. I got to drop the weight first. Like I said, I mean, I want to be 250 by Labor Day. My ultimate goal is two and a quarter. There's a long way to go. So, you know, and I'm not going to crash diet or anything like that. Do I get exercise? Yeah. Am I going to get a hell of a lot more exercise come summer? Sure, because I can get out and work in the yard. You know, I hate winter. You guys know that. I drives me absolutely nuts being stuck in the house with not a whole lot to do. Uh, you know, I don't play basketball, so, you know, that's not going to help, you know, and bowling isn't exactly the 
greatest cardio exercise you know, in the world. So, uh, but summer I get a lot of exercise. So we'll, that should help. Uh, caveman, look, if I look at 24 hour list in Knox County, it's 5X. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, dog mom. Planting my first blueberry plants. Any tips for trimming, wintering, soil, et cetera? Well, you definitely need to get some soil acidifier. So either the bag of soil acidifier or gardening sulfur or whatever, and you need to mix that into your planting hole. You know, blueberries like a pH of somewhere between four, around four and a half to five, okay? Neutral seven. So yeah, you need a quite acidic soil in there. Uh, don't worry about pruning them or anything like that at the beginning. Uh, concentrate on getting those roots growing and getting your good green growth on there. Make sure you've got acidic soil. That's the first thing to start with. Uh, Christ, it's 9.55 already. How time flies. Uh, Hillbilly Hippie. I just had two busloads of illegals in Newport, Tennessee. I was, next, I was in line next to them and got pictures. Yeah. The funny part I'm waiting for is when you get somebody like one of these, that Venezuelan idiot who was waving around hundred dollar bills saying, I'm going to start a business where we're just going to take over people's homes. I want to see how that goes in Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, that sort of stuff. So somebody come back from the grocery store and find a bunch of illegals in their house. They're going to be taking those illegals out in body bags, okay? Because these the, the people out in the country aren't going, well, I'm going to call the police and then I'm going to go through and wait for, you know, nine months until I get a court hearing. They're going to go in there and go bang, bang, bang. Okay, moving on along, you know, junior, take out the trash. You know, the hogs need slopped. That's pretty much what's going to happen. So we'll see. Uh, Fat Daddy's Outdoor Cooking. Hey, I haven't heard you in a while. Uh, what in the world did, did my head shrink? Where's the hat? No. This one? Right here. I still got it. Just decided to wear that one today. With the last five minutes of this one, I'll wear this one. Okay. Uh, just the mood I'm in. Whatever I feel like wearing. Uh, Dano, not the, not in the lion's den. Mr. Pinball, first through the looking glass. Farther, Alice, sir. Men in this country are wrong. Thoughts? I have no idea what you're talking about either. Okay, so moving on. Uh, Mama D's, each one, teach one. Everybody should be a member of USCCA. Everybody should at least carry. I'll leave that. Whether or not you want to join an organization, get your name on a list, that's up to you. Okay. Uh, Kathleen Maddox, what can you plant in a hot shady area? Uh, the shade is what's going to be the killer. You're not going to grow any, any food to speak of. Uh, well, it, I mean, you can eat hostas, but yeah, you're looking for shade plants. Start there. And then the heat you can dissuade with keeping them more watered. Uh, I mean, I was able to grow God knows what in the heat of Las Vegas, you know, did the ground dry out a lot faster? My soil? Yes. Okay. You just had to water them more so the plant could cool itself off. Uh, but focus on the shady. You can control the heat part. Uh... Joe Shinpa, is tomato tone okay for pepper plants and pepper seeds? Yes. Uh, you're talking about both night, nightshades. Uh, they run into the same types of diseases. They require the same types of fertilizers. You're good there. Uh, T Faith, 10 pound a month is great. What kind of diet am I on? Where Mrs. P and I are both, well, I'm doing carnivore and she's doing ketovore. Uh, let's see. Shot to the bottom, so I've got to find where it was, or at least close. Uh, 
Hillbilly Hippie Pinball Onion Sets in a Large Pot. I'm going to try. Good or bad idea. You can try. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, when you're doing onions, you plant them about six inches apart. So, I mean, even if you're putting them in a five-gallon bucket, you don't need to go that deep. But, uh, yeah, you can, you'll, you can grow onions in a pot, no problem. Uh, only in my dreams, why don't my radishes grow down in the soil? Uh, my guess is that you've got a very clay soil. You're going to need to work in a lot more compost into it. Uh, you need a little softer soil to it. And it is 10 o'clock. And for me, that's bedtime. <laughs> so, all right, gang. Everybody have a happy Easter. If I don't see you in the morning, I'll be here. But whether or not you got family, you know, God bless everybody. Happy Easter. Remember what the true reason for tomorrow is. It ain't about candy and bunnies. Have a good night. Pinball out.